Good morning, this is Sharon from the House of Prayer, and I'm here to bring you a prophecy given to Bertha Dude on October 30th, 1956, entitled Rapture. And the scales will suddenly fall from the eyes of my own, for they will understand what hitherto have remained concealed to them, but what the spiritually awakened person essentially understood. But since people are particularly strongly attached, no matter in the end, the knowledge about my plan of salvation for redeeming the souls will also be little known. And this alone is the key to all revelations which were given to people in a veiled form. People who are unaware of the individual periods of salvation even if they believe in justification, a last judgment, and in an end of the world. And according to this knowledge, they try to interpret the revelations which relate to this end. And the more intellectually they do so, the more confused become their results. My spirit, however, reveals to them in the most simple terms, the signs as well as the happenings at the end. And the rapture of my own will be the last process taking place on this earth before its destruction, before the complete change of the earth's eternal shape, which will wipe out all life on it. It is not as if they still be a long time afterwards in which people can discuss this happening, for this would undeniably signify compulsory faith for those left behind. No human being would then be able to close their mind to the realization of a living God and be forced to believe in Him. Yet I don't use such means in order to gain this faith. Consequently, the end will come as soon as I fetch my own from this earth. The horror of this will co coincide with the horror of certain death facing those who are left behind. For the earth will open up and flames burst through. People will feel paralyzed and incapable of thinking apart from the few which only need a small incentive to recognize me and call upon me in utmost need. But they are known to me, and therefore I will have mercy upon them and their souls, will not have to share the agonizing fate of the others. Whatever will come to pass, it was only possible to give people an illustrative prediction, for they would have understood it as long as my eternal plan of salvation could not be explained to them. But people's slow spiritual state did not allow for this. My word, however, has been always been preached to people. And my word urged them to be lovingly active, complying with my word, complying with my commitment of love, would have guided you humans into realization and thus also into the knowledge of my plan of salvation. In that case, they would have understood the symbolic descriptions, which certainly were understood by those whose life of love have resulted in spiritual enlightenment. Yet, the nearer it gets to the end, the more people's thinking will become confused, and the more mysterious are the images which their intellect is now trying to decipher. People should only ever try to keep to what I myself told them while I lived on earth. They should accept my words and live accordingly, and they would be surprised to realize that they are becoming enlightened 
and they fully understand everything which so far had been ambiguous to them. For my, for then my spirit can work in them and kindle a bright light for them. However, anyone who believes himself capable of gaining realization through eager studies yet neglects to live according to my will will never attain realization. He will lose himself in even more erroneous thinking. And no matter what he believes himself to have discovered, he will have to discard it again and find no illumination within himself. Only my commandments of love and their fulfillment ensure your correct thinking. And in that cease every word, every prediction, and every indication about the end will be understandably to you. For then you will be enlightened by my spirit, which never errs and always guides you into truth. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 Let no one deceive you in any way for the day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 and 52. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and he and we will be changed.